Um, people that take these roles typically have a very tough home life and uh, their longevity is often affected. And even though they make a ton of money, it's not the lifestyle I want. And that was a very hard thing because it's would some would measure it as moderately prestigious. So I share that is so how so I pose the question back to both of you. What is this journey? How do you take into how do you measure where you want to take your day and take your career? And um, is that changing or is that pretty well fixed? And what advice do you have to others that are trying to do the same? Like, gosh, what this looks like a great job, but it might ruin my my home life. You know, this is those sorts of things. Do you have any advice there? Any examples that's sort of the the benchmark of knowing who you are versus what's being offered? Yeah, I think for me, I, I kind of work backwards from the things that um, fulfill me. Um, what's what's most important to me or when do I feel at my best versus at my worst? And so kind of going back to that decision around the army is I value my autonomy. Um, I like to be able to make decisions uh, and not have my decision power taken away. Um, I tend to be... Uh, kind of obstinate and when I feel like my decision power has been taken away and anyone who has spent any time around the military will realize you have no decision power uh, when you're in the military and so it was just kind of working backwards from here that you know that that was something that was very core to to what fulfilled me and what made me um, happy and I would only have kind of a limited amount of it ever in that role. Um, I would say, though, to your other question is that that kind of evolves over time. I mean, I was 19 years old when I joined, so I kind of grew up and it changes as you're growing up. And it changed again when I uh, got married and changed again when I had a kid and then changed again when I had another kid. It changes when you start making more money versus, you know, just trying to pay bills. Um, and so it, it is a continuous process where I think you have to periodically reevaluate what fulfills you and where do you feel happy and uh, what are what are your priorities uh, and then kind of work backwards from there of, uh, of how do you get there and uh, how does that role or whatever potential role you're looking at support the things that you value and prioritize. Listen, I've been very fortunate. I, you know, very, very fortunate, more fortunate than than I have any right to that I've had some pretty amazing jobs um but as we talked about in our in our earlier thing you know most people think of me as a pretty laid back guy and I am but I also am very internally competitive and I always want to be number one um and so I decided in it this I can remember this really early in my Navy career like like Michael you know I was a young petty officer in the Navy uh, before I got commissioned. And I always wanted to be the guy who got the call. I wanted to be the guy who they said, hey, call Weatherford. You know, he can do this. And so that's kind of been the the mantra throughout my career is I wanted to be that person. Now, where I say I've been fortunate is every job that I've taken, I felt like I had the the flexibility to grow, uh, but much like you in every one of, I can't, I literally cannot think of a job that I've taken, um, post Navy where I didn't feel like, Holy crap, I am so far over my head here. Um, you know, everyone's going to realize that I'm a fraud, you know, the imposter syndrome, you know, maybe I'm too dumb to know better, but I just worked my way, worked hard and worked my way through it and figured it out. Um, and, you know, and, you know, I think another really, you know, a good leadership trait is, man, I surrounded, I, I never thought I was the smartest person in the room. Um, in fact, you know, you talk to any people, anybody that's ever worked with me or for me, and they'll say he probably wasn't the smartest person in the room, but I surrounded myself with people. I mean, you know, I surrounded myself with people who could play to my weaknesses, you know, and. And I have never, I was never, ever um, looking to be the guy who got all the glory. That's it for this episode of the new CISO. Thank you for listening. Check out more episodes on exabeam.com forward slash podcast. And remember to rate, review, and subscribe to get brand new episodes first. 